write it down and you tell me. We're going to go one, two, three, four. Oh. Warm, but not. Go, Tim! Go, Tim! Go, Tim! Exactly, pray. Well, we've just come from an extensive examination of uncharted country, sir. I am uh, not unfamiliar with Monsieur Nicolet's work. Then you should know, sir, that the map we produce from that work will open the territory we explore. What do you know about the Far West? Lieutenant... Uh... Fremont, sir. John Charles Fremont. What do you know about the sweep to the Rocky Mountains and on to the Pacific, Lieutenant Fremont? Well, not much, sir. But science unravels all mysteries. And Don't preach to me, sir. You're confident to a fault. Confidence of arrogance, I shouldn't doubt. The fact is, there hasn't been an exploration of the American West worthy of the word. Now, you say you have solutions, do you? 
Explain them to us, sir. Sir, anyone at all can follow the map we're making. Because it shows exactly what's there. If it says a certain stream enters 30 miles above another, that's exactly what you'll find on the ground. How can any map be that precise? Ours will be, sir. You see, it's based on star sightings, compass readings, longitude, latitude, terrain sketches. Well, it indeed. <laughs> uh, excuse me, gentlemen, artist. You have a, an ardent supporter here. Is he correct? Yes, sir. We will be months in preparation, but when we are finished, our map will be precisely as it says. You'll be uh, doing this in St. Louis? No, sir, Washington. We leave in a few days. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd very much like to see this epic as it takes shape. Perhaps a visit to your workroom would not be amiss. It would be our honor. Mm -hmm. You have a lot to learn, Charles. I'm sure I do, sir. Do not talk that way to a powerful man like Benton. You simply do not. I thought he rather liked him. I liked him, too, as a matter of fact. One does not like or dislike Senator Benton. One courts him. And one does not cast eyes at his daughter. Is that machine? Lord, what a beauty. So you caught me at it, did you, Papa Joe? It's a wonder the entire room did not. Charles, I advise you to put Jesse out of your mind. Jesse? Is that her name? Jesse. The apple of his eye and his closest confidant. Ever since his wife died, it is Jesse who presides at any dinner in the Benton house. Charles, I hope you do not jeopardize our work. I intend to marry her. was two whole years ago. You needn't remind me. And really, I had no knowledge of his intentions. The audacity of the man. You were 14 years old, asking for your hand in marriage. I'd have refused in any case, since I hardly knew him. Yeah. The point I'm trying to make, Yes, Papa, darling, I quite understand the point. The point is that my banishment... <laughs> banishment, indeed. Yes, banishment, Papa. To Miss English's very prof school in Georgetown. Now, girls, we are here to learn propriety and circumspection. Really, Papa, how much propriety and circumspection am I supposed to absorb? It's been almost two years now. Two years of exile in a hothouse. And I'm no hothouse flower. But you are very pretty one, though. <laughs> Papa, I care about the real things in the world. Things you deal with all the time. Going back to Georgetown is like... Moving from the real world to the artificial. There's more reality in 10 minutes in this study than in an entire month at school. And admit it, Papa. You do miss me, don't you? I miss you, yes. And I miss your help. Then let me come home, Papa, please. Well, I need I... to feel useful again. Now, maybe, maybe when the next term ends. The term is ending now, Papa. Now, don't rush me, Jesse. I have to think about it a bit. A bit? Does that mean yes? It means... <laughs> <laughs> You're so good. Yeah, I'm so easily twisted around your little finger. Oh, you poor, Now, poor. now you stop that. Manipulate. Can we get ah. on to more important matters, do you think? Yes, sir. At your service, oh. sir. You are perhaps the silliest creature I ever saw. <laughs> All right, now. This dinner party. Yes, sir. The dinner party, sir. Now, it's for a British visitor, Sir Roger Dunstan. He's a guest of Joel Points, and I'm really doing this as a gesture to Joel. Now, there is no Lady Dunstan. He's not with him. So put Mrs. Poinsett on my right and Joel on your left. Yes, sir. Consider it done, sir. Will you please be serious? <laughs> now, uh, uh, the Crittendons are going to be there, and I've invited uh, Senator Lynn and Henry Dodge, finally, Nicolay and a man named Provost, who guided the expedition, and, of course, that bright young assistant of his, Lieutenant Fremont. Have you been to the map room? Yes, it's fascinating. 
much of it is well over my head, believe me. But this young fella, Fremont, makes all seem so clear. I'd say he's the one that brings Nicolay's abilities into focus. Authority, but I must admit, I like it. Introduced. Lieutenant John Charles Fremont. <laughs> That's the same dress you were wearing in St. Louis. Yes. Did you wear it for me tonight? I hardly think that proper. Did you? Yes, I did. Do you know what I felt that night? Do you know what I said to Mr. Nicolay? I told him I'd finally met the woman I'd been searching for all my life. He was shocked. Do I shock you? I put you on notice, mademoiselle. I am very serious about you. I take notice. Come on, Luther, no. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. Good evening. Jesse, my dear. John, how nice to see you. Jesse. Come in, please. Do you know Lieutenant Fremont? Lieutenant Fremont? Mm -hmm. Lieutenant? How do you do, sir? Yes. Only last year, President Van Buren ordered the work day on federal projects reduced to 10 hours. Oh, you know it, business will be following suit. Yes. That's the nut of it, Sir Roger. It's a new world we've entered. Sounds more wine? Oh, I think you do. Your father always has the best selection. She is charming, isn't she? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, we did. We, uh, she is. And tell me, Senator, how many hours do your slaves work? Sir Roger, I don't enjoy talking about slavery, but I will say that this is not a slave household. Dodson here is a freed man in my employ. I hold no slaves, though it's perfectly legal to do so here in Washington. I abhor the institution. Moreover, no one shall take this question lightly. The division of North and South into ever more adamant groups represents the greatest of all threats to this union. Papa, slavery makes bad tabletop. Indeed it does. <gasps> Lieutenant Fremont, uh, would you say Mr. Provost here is uh, an experienced trail guy? One of the best, sir. Indeed he is. Mr. Provost, suppose and I were planning uh, a, a little journey west. West? Where? There's a lot of west out there, sir. <laughs> Across Kansas, uh, north the Platte River, Fort Laramie. It's a long way west, Tom. And beyond that, to the head of the sweet water at South Pass? I can just see you on a mule, Tom, in buckskin. <laughs> <laughs> How long will such a trip take, Mr. Provost? Doing exactly what, sir? Wandering around, uh, looking at Indians, buffalo? Mapping the route? Five, six months. Depending on uh, what you might run into. And why would you wish such a map, Senator? For the sake of, uh, convenience, shall we say? The convenience of an adventure further west to, uh, California, for example, or Oregon? Has anybody heard me mention Oregon? May I remind you, sir, that Oregon is British territory. No, no, it is not British territory. It's jointly held under treaty by the United States and Great Britain. Equal rights, sir, by force of discovery. Oh, yes, yes, I know the treaty. Only too well, in fact. 
but as a practical matter, Britain holds Oregon by occupying it, sir. Only for the moment, sir. And what does that mean? It means that America sees its destiny in an empire that sweeps across its own continent. Until it encounters British territory, and there it must stop. Our manifest destiny lies in westward expansion, sir. Let me assure you, one day, Puget Sound will be ours. That is an outrageous statement. Oh, my dear, I, I, I'm so terribly sorry. Please don't fret over it, Sir Roger. Look upon it as an omen of good. May we never spill anything but wine over Ark. Well said, Miss Benton. Cook has made the most sinful dessert. So, Dodson, would you clear, please? This isn't the most orthodox way of offering a man a commission, but what about it? Can you give me a map to South Pass? We, oui, bien sûr. I assure you, we will give you a map that anyone can follow. <laughs> what do you think, Henry? We do it through the Topo engineers, of course. Would 30,000 cover the cost? Give or take a penny or two. Oh, well, that would be more than enough. John, would the Whigs in Congress go that far for me? Well, I... I don't foresee any difficulties, Tom. How soon do you think you could mount such an expedition? Well, I imagine that we could... <laughs> Are you well enough to lead such an arduous expedition? Oh, yes, certainly. I have a small cold just now. More than a cold, Papa Joe. You've had that car for months, ever since we were up on the... Well, a bronchial irritation, but nothing... You were about to say, Mr. Provost. Senator, ever since those last few days on the Minnesota, the rivers were freezing over. Winter was coming on fast. Horses and men ready to drop. Well, Mr. Nicolet here... Well, there ain't any other way to put it. His health just... The plane broke down. That is nonsense. Lieutenant Fremont here had to assume command and lead us out. Absurd. Nothing of the sort happened, I assure you. <coughs> Charles, tell them, will you please? Papa Joe, you were very sick last year. You still haven't recovered. That is a vicious lie. Vicious and untrue. You were impatient to return. I humored you. Papa Joe, please. If you lead this new expedition, ambition. we'll be burying you on the way. Ambition. What you see here, gentlemen, is ambition. Yes. He wants to lead the expedition himself. Gentlemen, I have no such intention. What we have here is a hungry young man. Huh? <coughs> Will you give me a moment? <sighs> Lieutenant, will you lead the expedition? Papa Joe, I'll fetch you a hack. I require no further assistance. Thank you. Nothing ever changes, does it? French denied me the academy, and now you deny me this. Papa Joe, I wish with all my heart that you were well. Then do not change. Hungry man, huh? Do not change. Miss Ben, I must see you again. Yes, but... As soon as possible. They've asked me to lead this expedition. That means I'll be leaving soon. Leaving? May I ask for your father's permission to call on you? Yes, ask him. Why did he just stop? Jesse, come say goodnight to our guests. Of course, Father. Tonight. Ask him at once.
Senator, may I speak to you? Your about... attentions to my daughter are to cease at once. Sir, you are quite obvious, sir, and I won't have it. Senator, I assure you... You will daughter... assure me of nothing. She is 16 years old, and I will not have you see in her. Do you understand? You'll not see her. Senator, you... My intentions are entirely... You have no intentions. You will stay away from her. Defy me, and I will break you. Don't threaten me, Senator. I do threaten you. I'll give you fair warning. Good night, you gentlemen. I suppose if a kiss gets stolen here in the gazebo, I won't know anything about it. But I want your solemn promise that nothing more than that will transpire. Oh, Maria. Hush, dear. You're a grown woman. Do I have your word of honor, Lieutenant? You have, ma'am. Very well. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some errands to run. I was so frightened. So was I. Not of your father, did you? Me? I was afraid you might never see me again. I'd rather die first. I know he likes you. Just together, he doesn't like it. I'll speak to you. Tomorrow. It's the only way. No. He must. He'd be furious. Jesse. I love you. I love you. Well, then I'll speak to him. No, Charles. You must not yet, please. Why? I understand my father the way no one else does. You must promise. We can keep seeing each other here. Maria will let us. Charles? Please give it a little more time, won't you? of assistance? Thank you, Lieutenant. Situation's well in hand. What luck have you had finding a guide, Lieutenant? Uh, still looking, sir. Well, no time yet. Yes, sir, there's still time. Day? My mother was married to a major prior. 
Revolutionary War veteran. Sour, peevish old man, they tell me. It was an unhappy marriage. Then my father came along. They fell in love. My mother told Pryor about it. Honestly. Begged him to release her, but... He flew into a rage on and on. Even threatened her physically. So they... Ran away together. I was born... Before they were married. Out of wedlock, as, as they say. Why didn't you tell me this sooner? Good Lord, I've never told anybody. I'm not anybody, Charles. It doesn't matter to you. Well, it matters to me. You don't know how people treated us in Charleston. But my mother and I suffered. Sidelong glances. Silences. Amused contempt. But it was just a matter of timing. An accident. Accidents decide our lives. I'm not going to let an accident decide our future, Jesse. I leave tomorrow for St. Louis to talk to Colonel Carney about the weapons I ordered. When I get back, I plan to talk to your father. No. Jesse, I can't go on stealing kisses like this. I'm not a child. Do you think I am? Well, no, but we've been behaving like children. Stop it, Charles. Don't you see my father is only looking out for my interests? Your interests? That's outrageous. What is this, politics? What are you talking about? Look at what you're doing. I can't talk to him, and now I can't talk to you either. Jesse. All you both care about is your stupid pride. Jesse. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I just survived our first quarrel. You were Charles, I, I can't stop kissing you. Let me speak to him. No. That's not the answer. Are you sure? Positive. Then there's no reason for tears. Come now, dry your eyes. It's everything I've ever wanted, dreamed of wanting. He cares about things the way I do. And he's gonna do things, great things, I know that. Charles is gonna make a mark on our time. And I want to be with him when he does. To help him, to share with him, to love him. You must tell your father. How can I? After all these weeks of meeting Charles, when I was specifically forbidden to see him, I feel like a cheat. I've always been able to talk to Papa. Now, when I want to share the most important thing that's ever happened to me, I can't. Because I've been deceiving him. It's a betrayal, Maria. Nonsense. Tell him, Jesse. I'm only 17. A grown woman. Tell him. Maria, he could send me back to school again. Or to Boston, or to China. He has complete control over my life. He's my father. What are we going to do? What can we possibly do? Well, there is another way. I know. Perhaps that's our only choice now. Hmm. You seem to need quite a bit of hardware, don't you? Yes, sir. We'll be gone at least five months, sir. Where are you, Kenneth? Well, sir, my orders are to connect my survey to South Pass with a coastal survey made by Commander Will. I know. Why a cannon? We'll be passing through a good deal of hazardous country, sir. I'd like to be as well prepared as possible. Lieutenant, don't you know it takes a skilled artilleryman to handle a piece like that? 
Your expedition is composed solely of civilians. Well, yes, sir. But one of my men, Zindel, was an artilleryman with the Prussian army, sir. He knows how to handle a cannon of this size, sir. Cannon won't do you a damn bit of good against Indians. They maneuver like light infantry. Yes, sir, but uh, Ashley took one out in 26, sir, and found it effective. Lewis and Clark had a gun. Uh, a one-pounder. Yes, sir, but he used it effectively, too. Where are we after? The gun would be useful to me, sir, if only as a morale factor. Lieutenant, what class are you? 37, 38? I have the honor to be a graduate of West Point, sir. Well, that would explain your obvious ignorance of correct Army procedure. This requisition should have been made weeks ago into your own superiors in Washington. Yes, sir. But I knew only recently that I'd have a gunner along. Yeah. Prudence would dictate that if such a gun were truly necessary, a gunner would have been sought initially. And the chance presence of a gunner now doesn't make the gun any more necessary than it was earlier. Sir, I've been working for months putting this expedition together. There's still a... This expedition was commissioned by Senator Thomas Benton, was it? Yes, sir, it was. I noticed that you saw fit to mention that fact on the requisition form. Well, yes, sir, to indicate the importance Congress attaches to this mission. Very well, Lieutenant. I'll authorize the House, sir. On the grounds that a commander in the field should be allowed to choose his own weapons within reason. And the howitzer is just barely within reason. But I want you to know that I resent your implication. My implication? I've known and I've admired Thomas Benton for a good many years. But I do not look to him for military direction, and I don't believe that he intimated to you that I should. Sir, no one ever suggested that Senator Benton intimated... You'll it. get your weapons, Lieutenant, when you need them, including the cannon. I hope you use it well. John Charles. Folks call me Charles. Yes, sir, I know. Clem Lambert said you're looking for a guide to the western country. Me and him was in the mountains there. Is that so? Yes, sir. I know the country pretty good. I believe I can take you anywhere you got a mind to go. You know South Pass? Indeed I do, sir. I've been through it many times. Where else you been? Well, let me see, sir. I come down the Santa Fe Trail as a runaway. Spent a couple of lean years in Taos. I went out to California with... You and Young in 1830. Crap Beaver a while with Jim Bridger. You worked with Bridger? Oh, Gabe, I sure have. I've been half my life out in this country. I run the Rockies north to south, east to west. Ain't no part of them I don't know. You'll have to excuse all my questions, Mr. Carson, but you see... Just call me Kev. You see, I can't afford to choose the wrong man. It's too much at stake. I appreciate that, sir. I'll be frank with you, Mr. Carson. Call me Kev. I wanted Provost for this expedition, but he's not available. So right now, I'm looking for somebody like Bridger or... It's Patrick. Both of them good men. I advise you get either one of them, sir. Well, they're not available either. Tell me something. If you're so skilled in the mountains, why haven't I ever heard about you? Well, sir, likely or not, if you never heard of Kit Carson, then you ain't spend much time around the mountains your own self. You ain't been to Ben's Ford or Fort Laramie, or you'd never ask that question. I bet you don't even know you've got the choice of three jumping off places. Jumping off? Jumping off into the wilderness, sir. 
jumping clear off the edge of the earth feel sometimes. You got St. Joe, you got Independence, you got Westport here, all of them in Missouri. You ever been west of Missouri? Matter of fact, I have. <laughs> You've got yourself a job. Yes, sir. Kit. <laughs> Excuse me, Senator, but Miss Jessie is... Thank you, Dawson. We'll announce ourselves. Papa? What are you doing here? Senator Benton, we thought you should know. I thought you were on your way west. Not quite, sir. Well, what is it you wish? I've done nothing to discourage your leadership of this expedition. But if you have taken my courtesy as a sign that your attentions to my daughter are now welcome, then you're making a serious... We're married, yes. Senator. What? We were married yesterday. God, kill you! Papa, we're married! Legally, forever. How old are you? Twenty-eight, sir. What kind of a man are you? Preying on children. Jesse's not a child. I think you know I didn't marry a child, sir. You seduced a child! There's been no seduction, sir. I love Jesse. She loves me. You are not worthy to say her name. You are contemptible, Carlos. Afraid to ask for her, so you stole her. That's not true, sir. I didn't speak to you because that was Jesse's wish. I love her. And I promise to take care of her forever. Spare me your cheap sentiments. You have violated my family. You have taken advantage of my daughter. Your daughter deserves better than that, sir. She's not easily taken advantage of. Do you know that this man is illegitimate? Papa! The bastard son of Charles Fremont, a vagabond that wandered from town to town, painting frescoes, upholstering furniture, teaching French, seducing women? Papa, that's enough! Enough, indeed! I'll have this whole silly business annulled at once. If you do that... You'll never see me again. Then go now. Go on, get out of my house. Take your fine husband with you. about you here alone in Washington. I'd be all right. I have plenty of friends here. And besides, I know my father will make amends before long. How can he not? Once he realizes I've married a wonderful, honorable, brave, passionate. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go sad with <laughs> him.
found you. I've been looking for you everywhere. What is it, Maria? You must contact Charles at once. He's being recalled. Recalled? He's still in Missouri. A messenger has already been dispatched. To Westport? By the packet boat. Well, what has happened? A Colonel Carney at Jefferson Barracks has apparently been stewing over a cannon that the St. Louis Army issued to your husband. Now, he's contacted Washington. Why? What difference does one cannon make? Colonel Carney believes that it has no place on a peaceable, scientific expedition. And Washington agrees with him. Peaceable? There are wild Indians out there, Maria. Do you for one minute imagine that the Army's primary concern is for your husband's safety? He is not West Point, darling. Now, that's the long and the short of it. They regard Charles as a maverick, and they would love to replace him with one of their own. Jesse, he is being recalled. Do you understand? This is his dream, Maria. Floating in the West, making it safe for people to... There are no dreamers in the army, Jesse. They're only fools whose sole concern is for authority. The chain of command. The bowing and scraping and saluting that indicates a junior officer knows his place. Charles... Charles is a captain now. He was promoted a junior officer who ordered a cannon without going through the proper channels here in Washington. You said the call order went for packing box. Yesterday. The river loops and winds. A man riding over land could get there before the boat does, couldn't he? So I must write to him. I must warn him at once. Oh, thank you, friend. Come, Sally. How do you find peace, Captain? Might come in handy, don't you think? If I was an Indian and saw that thing, I'd run for the hills. <laughs> you reckon he knows how to find that thing, Louis? As well as you know how to cook, Martin o. Just make sure you got it pointed in the right direction, Zendale. <laughs> Your new map maker here, he don't like horses, Captain. And this one's bitten by a horse. They're stupid beasts. Well, why don't you ride a mule, then? They're even more stupid. You can always walk to South Pass, Mr. Trois. I will ride in one of the carts. Excuse me, Captain. Yes? I'll need some oil cloth for my sketchbooks. Wouldn't want to risk everything I draw getting washed out or blown away. No, no. Zendel, where's that oil cloth I ordered? Over here, sir. Sketchbooks? For what? For me to draw just about everything we see along the way. I was commissioned by the captain in Philadelphia. This is your first trip to Preston? Yes, sir. Yours, too? Hardly. The name's in Bell. Kern. Ned Kern. I'm an artillery man. Ever seen one of those before? No, sir. I spent the last few years in the classroom teaching. This is all pretty new to me. Welcome to your Ned. This promises to be a most interesting trip. <laughs> message from Mrs. Fremont. Is she all right? She's fine, sir, but she wants you to read that fast. Darling husband, there are very important reasons for you to leave Westport at once. I beg you, leave within the hour. Trust me and go. I love you, Jesse. All right, men, pack it up. We're moving out.
never see so many buffalo in all your life, Captain. I've never seen any buffalo before. <laughs> there got to be at least 2,000 of them out there. The idea is, is you pick yourself a cow and you hold to her. You gotta run your horse like he is running on your own two legs. Never mind them breaks or draws and prairie dog holds. You think you can cut yourself loose like that? I'm ready. You enjoy sending that buffalo pie, Cap? Yeah. Life's little blessings. I guess it broke my fall. How's your horse? Didn't break nothing, did he? No, he looks all right. You get off for a shot? Well, I might as well throw him a stone. She took the slug and never slowed down. I couldn't believe it. Raised off her ribs, I expect. You got to hit him right behind the air. You won't get him. A vital spot's that small. You aim at that little spot like I told you? Aim? I was lucky to get off a shot at all. I never known a man get a buffalo at first try. Well, I run seven cows myself before I got one down. Now, this ought to keep us in meat for a while. You ever taste fresh buffalo blood, Captain? <laughs> Not lately, kid. Give her a try. Make you a true son of the plagues. <laughs> Go ahead. Can't hurt you none. It's just like warm milk, doesn't it? Oh, exactly, kid. You're gonna be all right. You ain't just a stargazer, Captain. You're gonna make a first-rate buffalo man. Yeah, it sure spoils you for me, don't it, Lewis? Spoils for anything but women. 
I care for the taste of it. It'll grow on you, Royce. I doubt it, Mac. Engines know how to eat all right. Engines know. Oh, a whole lot more good eating, I can tell you that. That's for sure. You can see them bring down a buffalo with nothing but a bow and arrow. Huh. You know, plenty of them Indians do. Use lances most of the time. Not buffalo, I mean. Well, I know that. They can do it with an arrow, too. Oh, what? Nearly anything with an arrow. Anything? Well, I never knew what a weapon an arrow could be till the night one come out of the dark and hit Jules Garments right in the back. <laughs> Him and me was hunting buffalo. He was standing around the fire, warming his hands, you know, and come Blackfoot. Knocked him right in the fire. He fell into it on his face. Old Jewel high, he started screaming, he rolled over on his back. And that broke off the damn shaft, you know. Worst thing that could have happened. There just weren't anything we could do for him after that. Blackfoot. Well, there ain't no Indian tougher than a Blackfoot, nor meaner. Torture him. Keep him alive for hours, kicking and screaming every minute. Their women love it. They love all that screaming. That's what a bad. Lucky we're in Sioux country. So ain't no pussycats neither, Charlie. The great warriors. Lucky we got the cannon, eh? Uh, cannon won't do you no good against your engines. The engines won't give you nothing to bombard. That's right, General. They don't fight that way. Oh, speed, surprise. One minute you're sitting around the fire, the next minute <laughs> you got an arrow in your back. I do not much care for Indians. Royce, you and I better get started. Good clear night. Best if you get some sleep, big day tomorrow. Do you want to first guard? Yes, sir, Charlie. You all right, Ned? Yes, sir. Get some sleep, then. Yes, sir. Not much like Philadelphia, is it? No, sir. There weren't any Indians back home. Haven't seen any around here yet, either. Except around this fire tonight. <laughs> Makes the men feel better to talk about it. I guess maybe it does. We'll get some sleep. There's a good guard posted. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Seven degrees. Mark. Fifty-five degrees. Captain, I have been thinking that I have not thanked you properly. For what, Carl? For your tolerance. When I first came to your house, I was so badly spoken so nervous that I sat up. You saw beyond that and gave me work. Work that I needed. Well, you don't have to say anything about that. Oh, yes, I do, Captain. I know the others think I am a foolish and a rigid man. Perhaps I am. But I'm not an ungrateful one. And the work I do for you will vindicate your trust in me. I thank you, Captain. Carl, I couldn't do this work without you. Good morning, Walker.
something moving across the river in the trees. You see right there at the edge of the black timber. Is it the Indians? I don't know. White men. Hey, Travers. Mr. Bridger. Thanks, sir. We've got him all game. He is the best trail guide in the world. How about this coffee? Yes, thank you. What you fellas doing down here? We're heading for South Pass. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I was you. Why not? Ogallala Sioux's running wild in Sweetwater Valley, and they'll kill anything that moves beyond Laramie. You remember Henry Fave Kit? Yeah. Old trapper leader. Yeah, got himself killed last year down on Little Snake Creek. Had 30 men with him, Sioux War Party come down on them. Frabe and three others got killed, but they took 10 Indians with them. Sioux's been brooding over their dead all winter. And now they're going to raise a little hell and take some scalps. Where'd you get this information, Mr. Bridger? You know, we just come from South Pass. Did you lose any of your party on the way through? Of course not. We went 100 miles out of our way to avoid them. You didn't actually see any of these Indians, is that right? The whole point was not to see them, Captain. And how do you know any of this is true? Sue Chief, I know, told me. Remember old Great Belly? Oh, yeah. He told me the young men had bad hearts this winter. Said they was making medicine. Said they had the biggest sun dance he ever saw. And they swear they're going to kill themselves some whites for what the trappers have done. So you think this is really serious? Well, it depends on however serious you count your own life. I can tell you this. Any man goes past Laramie ain't gonna live very long. Not with 1,500 Sioux out there. 1,500? Mother of God. That's the kind of numbers would make a man cautious. Well, before we all start running scared, maybe we ought to ride out there and see for ourselves. <laughs> You got yourself a real brave one here, kid. Yes, sir. Well, I guess better be going. How's nice meeting you, Captain? Mr. Bridger. Yeah, well, here it is. No, 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 no. On the contrary. To die is a terrible thing. I am Mr. Scrabble. It's a tiger. Old Curly here wants to die among the Prussian princes and dukes and such. Charlie? I'm sorry to break in on Just giving some thought to what's ahead. So you plan on moving? Thinking about it. Well, there ain't many of us think it's such a good idea, Charlie. Matter of fact, Kit just made out his will. His what? His will, sir. He told us chapter and verse who's to get all his property if he croaks. Now, the thing is, Charlie, Kit knows his country, knows Indians, too. Right. Absolutely. But, Charlie, if Kit thinks... Here's Kip. What the hell is this about you making a will? That's right, sir. Why? Well, you seem bent on moving out when it makes no sense. And 
I figure I better put my affairs in order, sir. Why couldn't you just write it out? Why'd you have to tell everybody? Well, talking out your will is the custom here. A scrap of paper might get lost, so you talk out your intentions in front of men you trust, and the word gets around. Why? Some of the young fellas get into a panic? Of course they do. Man, I'm supposed to be guiding this expedition. If you're scared to death, what do you think they're going to feel? Captain Fremont, I don't take kindly to someone question my courage. I respectfully ask you, sir, don't do that again. How do you expect me to interpret this? You're trouble, Captain. You've got fear and caution all mixed up. I'm cautious as hell, that's true. I don't take risk, I don't have to. That's why I'm not dead and gone years ago. And right now, I don't see no reason to move out. <laughs> not for no darn map. No, sir. The same ground's gonna be out there two weeks from now. For that matter, 200 years from now. You're wrong. They want that trail map now. We're commissioned to do it now, not 200 years from now. Not two weeks from now, but now. Well, sir, you try telling that to the Sioux. That's exactly what I plan to do. Well, all right. I'm ready whenever you are. Strike the tents! We're moving out! You heard, Captain? Let's load them up! All right, leave the wagon! I still don't like it, Captain. I don't either. But it's gotta be done.
Sabalo. Woakwa hipilo. Nituahe. Natakwiachahe. He wants to know what we're doing here. Tell him we're mapping the terrain. Yes, Captain. Woakwa hipilo. We pia makoche o ape. There you go. Does he understand what maps are? He ain't a dummy, Captain. Tell him we're using the stars to make this map. Sir, if I explain that in broad daylight, but I'm going to try. We chuck the gay um pablesa, huya ka ke um koapalo. Maybe you better bring out your telescope, Captain. Ned, show him your sketchbook. Go on, it might help. Chasha, Ini Chape. Ia, Ia. You ask if we're trappers, I assured him or not. Ekta, Umaka Heha, Waku we Chasha, Oglala, Ota we Chakta. Nakun we Chasha, Doctor. We Shante, Un, She Chap. I said we put our hearts on the ground in apology for what the trapper's done to the old Lala. Now we'll see. Leo Docto, Kanopiha, Wakagni Kashni. He says we're a small bunch of men. Unko, unaya hantas, lila winitka. With these odds, we'd be crazy to start into trouble. Tamaya, chun washteya, ya unkta. Captain, he's inviting us to this fandango. Washteya, washteya! They're going to put on a little show for us.
What is it? I don't know. It ain't good, that's for sure. Looks like one of us, don't it? I think I got to figure it out. If we showed them power, they're going to show us skill. What you done? Put down the gun, Marty. Put it down. It's all right. It's all right. It was all a mistake. It's all right. We're sorry. Uh, Ned. Get one of those skins. Draw a big circle on it and put it on the chest. Uh, Louis, give me your pistol, will What the hell's he doing? I don't know, but it better work. He says you're a soul blood brother under that 